Hi. This uh, video is to explain you how to use the uh, LabVIEW program to run the Mosquito. Actually, this one here was made for the Mosquito demo, the one that runs with the LabJack. Uh, but the user interface is almost the same uh, like for the other uh, Mosquitoes. Uh, for example, the ones that run with the National Instruments uh, DAC card. There's just very, very small differences between um, all these Mosquitoes in terms of user interface. So, first of all, let's look at the name of the files. Uh, this is the syntax I use. This is a program that runs the Mosquito, and this Mosquito works with the LabJack. It's the stream version, which means that it has fast acquisition, and it is made for LabVIEW 10. You might see the same name here with LabVIEW 8.5. That is the program that we use in the lab at CTS. Uh, that is using a version, an older version of LabVIEW, LabVIEW 8.5. So these program, programs will be incompatible. Uh, they have to be, uh, you know, uh, transferred from one LabVIEW version into another one. So when you go to download these programs from, from the website, you should be looking into these last uh, letters here at the end of the name uh, to know which one to uh, download. So this is where we start the program. So now the program will be running in a few seconds and it asks us to get a configuration file. Okay. Now a configuration file is a file where you store in memory your own settings for the program. So this allows customization, allows many people uh, to run or to use the same resource and um, customize the use for themselves, individualize the use. So next time you come to use the resource, you have actually saved all these um, parameters in memory. So let's say your name is Mark, and this is your configuration file. And just save it. And next time you come back, you just open that file. Instead of creating another one, you just open that same file. You should always look here, because this is where the program tells you what it's doing and the steps, uh, next steps you might want to take. So it tells you basically that you need to initialize the programs and this is the initialization button. You can actually escape initialization if you want but this is this will put the program into a, a more safer okay a, a safe running mode and this is good for debugging the program but normal use you don't press this button so you leave it on, off and then you press the initialization now what the program does, it asks you, is the Mosquito connected to the computer through the USB cable? Okay, It actually doesn't know, so that's why it asks you this question. If it's not, then you just um, push the whoops button and, and connect the Mosquito to the computer. Wait a few seconds before the uh, driver for the LabJack is uh, uploaded and, and the device is initialized. And then come back and hit the initialization button again and hit the everything OK button. Now the program is uh, initialized and it is ready to use. <coughs> this is where the data will be displayed in this graph here. This part here of the program will help you run a script. So this is basically a file containing a list of commands that you can run after uh, one after the other um, so you can automate your experiment. This is where you have all these uh, controls for the acquisition and I want to have your attention on this button here this is where you choose the operation mode we're now in alignment mode which is like a scope mode it is a mode of acquisition that helps you see if everything is okay with the mosquito um, if the laser is on uh, if the transducer is, is, is okay, if the sample is okay. So this is a mode of acquisition which is slower than other modes and allows you to you know, set up your experiment to do some debugging and so on. These buttons here are related to the piezo. So this allows you to, to, move, uh, to uh, move the, uh, the piezo, um, uh, the piezo um, system. It is only for one axis of motion. Okay. 
here you can change the speed and the acceleration of the piezo and this is where you control the detection parameters how many samples per second uh, it acquires and if you want to do some averaging on the acquisition or not so let's see how it works I put the detection on actually if you right click if you right click on the uh, display here you can uh, choose auto scale, you can choose different parameters of, of the display so I'm gonna take out now the auto scale and we'll zoom in there we go you can also change the scaling here so let me put 3 volts just double click on a number minus 3 volts just to see the signal now this is where I put it on and off and I move the fiber and you see that the signal it doesn't move that means that the laser is not on so I go on the box of the mosquito turn the laser on there you go now we have a signal which is live I'm moving the fiber so you're getting a live signal so this is how you know if you forget to put the laser on and off this is the button of, on the mosquito box this is the T this is the voltage to the detector on and off you can see here that we're turning now the bias current off so basically if I move the fiber the uh, uh, signal is, is dead we're not measuring anything so this should be on and the button from the mosquito box should also be on and now you have a live signal Okay, just move the delivery fiber, and because it's damaged, you will see some uh, some uh, signal, or just move the uh, transducer, and it will g also give you a signal. So let's see how the acquisition works here. So let me put 1,000. It should be a little faster. If I put just 10, means that I'm acquiring 10 samples per second which should be a lot slower so let's put it back to 1000 which is 1 kilo samples 1000 samples per, per second and let me hit the averaging button well what we're doing here we're averaging 25 points so this signal here must be a little cleaner so if you diminish the number of points to average the acquisition will accelerate now we're only averaging five points five samples you can also do moving average this is how signal reacts to moving average so you can go on Wikipedia and see the difference between moving average and simple average we don't have to discuss it here let's now go to the displacement calibration mode the displacement calibration mode or operation mode is the mode where you map the displacement of the tip of the transducer into voltage okay so this is what enables you to calculate basically the force that acts on the transducer or the displacement of the transducer based on the intensity of the laser that comes back from the transducer here you have again the piezo controls and the way you do this operation here you have the piezo in contact with the tip of the transducer and you push the transducer with the piezo from one position, initial position, let's say 1 to a final initial, po initial position let's make it 11 with a certain number of um, with a certain length of a step once you put this parameter in place uh, you can actually put your piezo in an absolute position here and hit the scan button if you wait long enough step by step the piezo will reach the final position the scan will end and it will ask you to save the data if something is wrong you can prematurely stop the scan by hitting the stop button and the system will still ask you to save the data you might not want to run the displacement calibration if you already have a file um, of the displacement calibration a file that contains this data so you can just hit this button here and import that data here's where you save um, 
set and save some experimental parameters. These are the detection parameters for the scan which allows you to set how many samples uh, you should acquire and uh, average for every point that appears on the graph and the sampling rate. You should choose these numbers here uh, wisely. Uh, the idea here is to eliminate fluctuations in the signal and some noise is high frequency, some noise is low frequency. So by choosing the proper combination of samples to get and to average and sampling rate, you can eliminate most of the noise. So that's about the displacement calibration. We now go to the experimental mode. This is the mode where you will uh, acquire the actual data. What you see here is just a pad. We put info about the experiment. This info here is going to be saved with the data. So let me put some just for you to recognize it later. You can again set the parameters here, experimental parameters. Here you can choose the detection parameters. This is very important. Uh, this experimental mode is a fast mode of acquisition. It's a scan mode. And here you have to preset the number of samples to acquire. The, sample is, the sampling rate, how fast these samples will be acquired, and the duration of the entire scan. These things are connected with some algebra in the back of the program. So if I change the duration, the samples to get will get updated and if I change the sampling rate the duration will get updated and so on. So let's place ourselves at 10k, 10,000 samples per second and let's acquire 10,000 samples which gives us one second of total acquisition hit the acquisition, uh, detection button and we can see this here uh, the acquiring data is on telling us the acquisition is on and when the acquisition finishes this indicator here goes off. What you have here is our tools to manipulate the data that you are acquiring. So we see that we have one scan already in memory. You can delete this data you can save it, you can actually import data from files. So I'm going to do an acquisition and move the fiber so we can see a fluctuating signal. So this is my first data. I'm going to hit the button again. Let's acquire for two seconds now. Notice that the samples to get has been updated. I'm going to move the fiber a little faster, higher frequency. There we go. So the red curve here is the second one and you see that it's twice longer because we acquired for two seconds. So I can turn off the second one and just see the first one, turn it on again and turn off the first one. This is allows you to display. All the curves are here. This is the first one we acquired. This is the second one we acquired. We can delete the second one. <coughs> we can save first one. Here you can choose to save the raw signal, the displacement or the force. You cannot sa save displacement and force until you have a displacement calibration curve. So let's save the mosquito signal in volts for now. There we go, the data was saved. Here you can also display displacement or force, but since we don't have a displacement calibration curve, if I put displacement, the system is going to tell me that there is no displacement calibration curve. Basically, it doesn't want to do anything because it doesn't have the information to transfer volts into displacement or into force. This is where we could go back to the displacement calibration operation mode and get the displacement calibration curve or get a file from memory. Let's go back to the experimental mode, put this curve on. So let's delete this curve. 
acquire another one so I'll move this around oops sorry that's because I forgot to change the signal here move it back there delete this curve acquire again there you go so <coughs> I'm gonna go and compare this data here with the one that I have saved before so I say plot for memory and go look for the file this is the file hit the OK button and there you go so this is how I compare data that I acquired now with data that was saved in memory deleting the data that was saved in memory doesn't delete it from memory it just deletes it from the display and I can go open the, the actual file you'll see it's a text file that opens with notepad and let's take a look at the data structure in there now this is exactly the information that we put up here so it gets saved with your data and you have other information saved as well which are the parameters of your mosquito device and this tag here should never be removed you can actually do anything you want with the data here you can add more information and save the file but never remove this tag because this is what is used by the program to recognize the data field and go get the data from the file right. so that's how the file is done and I think that's almost everything about this program so in order to exit the program just hit the exit button there you go Thank you very much.